he looked nailed on to lead UKIP into its post-Brexit, post-Nigel Farage future. That was until an incident with a fellow party member left him in hospital and led to one of the most dramatic party resignations of recent years. Now, Stephen Wolfe is getting back into frontline politics with a new report on immigration after we leave the EU. He joins me now in the studio. Hello, uh, thank you for morning, being sir. with us uh, this morning. Now, before we get on to the immigration report yeah. and the future of UKIP, I'm, I'm keen to get your thoughts on the really big and important story of the week, Syria. Yes. Uh, Nigel Farage and Paul Nuttall have both really spoken out against Donald Trump's uh, move uh, to launch these airstrikes in response to the gas attack. What's your position? I think in terms of the general politics of the United States, this has actually sowed the seeds of, of Trump losing the next election because it was absolutely clear that with Bannon and others supporting this America First uh, kind of concept, that that meant no intervention in other countries. It meant having an opening with, with Russia. So he's gone back on his word. Effectively. And I think people will see not only that he's gone back on his word, but he actually looks more like uh, the Democrats that he argued so vehemently before. But there's also an important thing that you kind of see here is the power of Kushner now in terms of uh, uh, Jerry Kushner coming in there and saying, look, it's, it's me now. I've been able to influence my father-in-law to make this decision. And there's one comment that says that uh, Bannon accused Kushner of actually being a Democrat and that this would damage. And I think that's the long-term consequences in the United States. Um, moving on. Now, six months ago, you were seen as the future of UKIP, the leader in waiting post Nigel Farage. And then in a pretty remarkable couple of days, we saw you knocked out cold on the floor of the European Parliament. You resigned from the party. And to be honest, we haven't really heard much from you since. So where have you been hiding? Well, I think I needed to take some time out. It was a dramatic and traumatic uh, period for me. I'd worked incredibly hard across the uh, past six years for UKIP. We'd worked really hard through the referendum. I was spending you know, hours and hours every single day working with some brilliant people. And for me to, to see what had happened in the party at that time once Nigel had resigned, not just myself, but there were other decent people like Nathan Gill being attacked in Wales, the way that they treated Diane James. It was a period for me to say, no, I've got to step back, think about what's happening and consider how I can support Brexit. This is something that I'd worked on. And that is why I've now worked with a number of people for a good period of time to produce this report, which will be, in my view, a template for this government to achieve what British people wanted, leaving Brexit, keeping immigration, reducing the numbers and having ourselves open to the world. So this is the report that you're launching today, uh, saying that you want to get net migration down to 50,000 a year. Now, the OBR, the official apolitical independent analysis uh, analysts have said that getting immigration down to an even bigger number than what you're saying would have a huge hit on the economy, £16 billion. So are you prepared then to see billions of pounds more borrowing in order to get net migration down? Well, you see, that's one aspect of the reports that the OBR have done. But in the research that I've looked at, I don't believe that will actually be the case because that takes a view that will have masses of people leaving this country. And I don't believe that those people who've come from uh, the European countries, they're now settled communities, they'll be here. I think there needs to be a real important training programme going on. We have 826,000 young people, 16 to 24, without a job. And there'll be a clear recognition that Theresa May's already started this, we can see that, through apprenticeship schemes and training programmes, that they will be brought back into the system as well. So I think they're really putting out, not a a fair programme, obviously, I I think they're just being a little bit too extreme in what would actually happen. The programme I've got in place will actually have a gentle progression. There's another thing that I'm slightly confused about in your report, so I'm hoping you might be able to clear this up. Now, you say in the report there should be no further restrictions on student immigration, but also that students should still be included in that target. But you still want to get net migration down to 50,000 a year because... Net immigration of students hasn't been below that target now for the last five years. I mean, last year, for example, it was 70,000. So your whole target would be used up, and more probably, no, because, by students. No, 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 because th- th- this is something that I tried to set out in, in the back of the report with the numbers. You have to consider also the amount of emigration that we have. So if you have emigration, which is over 327,000, you take off the students, you add those on asylum, you add those with family reunion, we're already in a net migration situation. So the only number that puts us into a positive net migration situation, the numbers that we have at the moment, is work. 
and those who are coming here to work. So that is the area you've got to target. And my belief is that we have around 100,000 visas coming in each year. And we only have 4,000 highly skilled entrepreneurs now, 96,000 in terms of the... But we're talking uh, about net immigration of students yeah, yeah, here absolutely. that is over... That it's last year was 70,000. Yes, but what I'm saying, we had 327,000 in terms of emigration. Deduct the, net, the students from that and you already have net migration, which is down below 100,000 there. Add on asylum, add on family reunion, and you keep creeping up towards that zero point. And that is where you've got to be looking at the workers coming in. And I believe that we can have highly skilled workers into this country with a really dominant and important points-based system, a British workers' visa system, which is, has at its core a fair, flexible and forward-thinking philosophy and an idea of bringing net migration down will work for our country. Now, I'm keen to talk about UKIP. Yes. Um, we were saying that six months ago you were seen as the future uh, of UKIP. Now, since then, things have been very difficult for the party. You had the leader uh, failing to win uh, that by-election that really many people criticised uh, the campaign that was run there. You've lost your only MP. Post-Brexit, do you really think there's any reason for UKIP to exist anymore? Well, I believe that there, w there should be a reason for UKIP to exist. I, I wouldn't have wanted to stand if I didn't think that. And that is because there is a large number of people in this country who don't trust the Labour Party, don't trust the Conservative Party, and actually feel as though they've been left out or left behind. And but is UKIP serving those people now? I don't think they are at the moment, which is the really sad thing about it. I think their messages are mixed. I mean, take, for example, on immigration. This is one of the biggest issues. They've, they've got a person who you never even hear about in terms of immigration in charge of that policy. And, and they should be cool, driving... Yeah. Well, actually, I think it's their treasury. The, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and li literally, they're not pushing the issues that matter. And that's because they're still fractured. They're losing members. They're losing uh, people who supported them. They're losing votes. And that shouldn't have happened. And all of this was caused by the infighting that occurred, the desire to drive out decent people in the party. And I think now what they can see, that they were duped by uh, an MP who didn't want UKIP to be at the front of the Brexit campaign at all. You're blaming Douglas Carswell there. Um, do you think that Nigel Farage also needs to share some responsibility for the infighting that really has riven UKIP? I think everybody has a responsibility and I would probably have to say even myself at that stage because people were trying to argue different positions on that. But what is about Nigel Farage? Well, what Ni Nigel made a very clear point that he, he said be careful of Douglas because Douglas wanted to damage the, the referendum campaign. Douglas' own words have said that that was one of his intentions uh, now as we see from reports. The real responsibility is those people in the National Executive Committee who are receiving all oh, those who are employed by the party large sums of money who were duped by that or desired uh, a, a different person in the leadership and were not willing to listen to those who had greater experience than themselves or had to face the real politic of the day of having to meet other politicians and see what was happening. What's your relationship like now then with uh, people in UK? I still have a pretty reasonable relationship with uh, the membership. I get some positive comments all the time. Uh, the membership, but the what, membership. how about the people uh, within, well, I, I the, have the figures within UKIP? Well, within the uh, UKIP kind of polity, I have probably about half a dozen MEPs that I still have lunch and have drinks with. I have a chat with Nigel from time to time. Obviously, he keeps his distance from me a little bit. But for the vast majority of them, sadly, no, they see me as some sort of pariah. Uh, it's, it's a bit schoolboyish, but I've learned that's some things that happens in politics, sadly. <laughs> and I think we should have big enough shoulders and broad enough shoulders to move on. I've certainly tried to do that. Uh, and the way I'm looking at it, the sun's out. We've got summer coming. Brexit's on its way. Theresa May is doing her best and we've just got to make sure that we battle against those Remainers who seek the negativity about Britain instead of seeing what a great country we are and moving forward. Well, the sun is undoubtedly out this weekend. <laughs> uh, Stephen Moore, thank, thank you. you very much.